What? Charles and William played a trick on Harry following the rules of letters patent. Sussex slipped on a banana peel. Hello, friends. Welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple, Harry and Meghan Markle, on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. Charles could want the grandchildren to sit on the balcony, as someone else said. But I believe, similar to the Jubilee, working royals only will be the line in the sand. Not only does that prevent Meghan and Harry from using the balcony, but it also essentially prevents Clan York from using it. It'll be King Charles III and Camilla, the Wales slash Cambridges, and maybe with Timothy Lawrence, but not the Tyndalls or Peter Phillips. Edward and Sophie, and maybe Louise and James. Possibly Gloucester, Kent, and Princess Alexandra to link back to Queen Elizabeth II's generation. Yet while having them on the balcony is never out of the question, I think it's doubtful that William would want Harry anywhere near him during the coronation. In his current capacity as Prince of Wales, William has succeeded. Although, I thought the announcement was presented in a predictable, trashy manner. I don't think the youngsters receiving their titles represents a significant concession. In essence, they already set things up with the Oprah interview. If Charles refused to allow them to use the titles, they could then use the race card once more. She doesn't feel apologized to, given the timing of the news of the princess and the christening, as well as Gozi Fulani's statement. Clearly, they decided to try and bring the racist angle back into play. This didn't really work because Harry screwed that up from their side with the publicity run for spare. And from the Fulani side, the palace has clearly apologized. So it just looks confusing. And she's not stepping down from sister space because of this. More likely because the powers that be are probably probing it more carefully after that very thorough Twitter overview of their finances last year. Charles, by just quietly playing by the rules of the letter's patent, is keeping Harry and Meghan from causing more drama. And the reality is they are now entitled to use them. They just haven't realized it highlights how erratic and hypocritical they are. They see it as a win, whereas the palace sees it as an inevitability they're gray rocking their way through. It's not as palatable as Charles dramatically cutting them off, but he's just not allowing them any more feel for their bullshit than strictly necessary. All while he's probably still grieving his mother, is in transition from being Prince of Wales and stepping up to kingship and planning the coronation. Not to mention, Parliament has a fuck ton of other way more important priorities right now than dealing with Harry's titles, because everyone seems to forget Charles cannot strip the titles. Only Parliament can. I'm thinking the second half of 2023 and 2024 will probably see more action as far as severing ties. Once Charles is past the coronation, he and his courtiers will start being a bit more efficient about things. But right now, there's the coronation and the UK is a political slash economic shit show. Actual leadership of the country takes precedence over Harry's tantrums and Meghan's exceedingly clumsy machinations. Also, gotta wonder if the British royal family also has its own divorce watch going on. Depending on, upon what Harry's U.S. immigration status is, he is totally eligible for a green card, but it's not believed he has one. So he must have some sort of work visa. But without a job, and as someone posted earlier, the SVB bank meltdown actually puts Harry's job at Better Up at risk. And if he divorces Meghan, he may have to come back to the UK until he's settled in a Commonwealth country or maybe the Shetlands. There are just a lot of moving parts here. Charles is not omnipotent and he has other shit going on right now. If Harry and Meghan think they have the upper hands, they may make fewer waves around the coronation. So the titles are a bone to throw them. They mean fuck all in the US and in fact make Harry and Meghan look grasping and desperate so they can be as pretentious as they like in California. You know that crowd is probably just eye rolling the fuck out of them at this point. An expert has clearly explained that more than this problem as follows, I just think people kind of forget that Charles is not omnipotent. 
He is, generally speaking, a titular head of state, and his powers are essentially ceremonial. Even when the laws of succession changed so women could be directly in line in their birth order before George's birth, it took a few years for that legislation to work through Parliament. I'm quite sure the Queen put a bug in the PM's ear. I think that was either David Cameron or Gordon Brown. I can't remember. But she couldn't just write a proclamation and say, make it so. It's a parliamentary constitutional monarchy. Parliament actually makes the laws and deals with the dotted is and cross T's of the monarchy. The British royal family is part of the UK government, and untangling it is a bit complicated. So Charles slimming down the monarchy is him conceding the ceremonial nature of the gig and the transition that his ascension represents. Actually, LOS changes aren't just a British Parliament decision. There are 14 other countries that have to agree to the change. Several of them will probably start the process of removing the monarch if they are asked to change the LOS. It's one thing to change things so women have equal inheritance rights. It's another to remove people from the line. Jamaica and several other Caribbean nations are already leaning towards removing the UK monarch as head of state. They were waiting for Queen Elizabeth II to die to start serious discussions as is. From a few of the Aussie and Canadian commentators, it sounds like they'd consider removing the monarch if they were asked to change the LOS. I'm sure most countries can agree that no one wants Harry or his kids or Andrew as monarch. But there are three healthy heirs under the age of 10 in front of them in line, and given modern lifespans, odds are really good at least one makes it to adulthood and has heirs of their own. We are all frustrated as heck watching Meghan abuse the royal family from the outside, so it's important for folks to take a step back and consider how it is affecting the royal family on a personal, familial level. The fact that this is all playing out on the world stage just adds another massive layer of complexity in handling all of this. As you said, it is difficult enough for the average person to maneuver and navigate life with a narcissist. We must afford King Charles III some patience and compassion here. I also understand that people want to see swift retaliation by the royal family to give Harry and Meghan their cup of upbits. But things do take time. The changes people are demanding regarding title slash privileges can't just be declared like Michael Scott declaring bankruptcy, lol. There is a legal process that must ensue to affect those changes. Plus, we all know royal family plays the long game masterfully. So even if your theory, one to which I subscribe, doesn't plan out, I think the most important aspect is that we all try and practice patience. Try not to jump to conclusions or pass judgment on the royal family too quickly. There are so many things going on behind the scenes that we nor the Harkles know about. More will be revealed in due course. What decision do you think King Charles should make to punish Harry and Meghan? Let us know your thoughts below in the comments section. We hope you have found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.